cope with. First up, ABS, the system that prevents your wheels from locking like this when you brake. One of the hardest things for ABS to do is stop you on an icy hill. Without ABS, this happens. But with the latest ABS now engaged, will the result be any more controlled? Yes, undramatic, but very impressive. ABS stops your wheels slipping when you're braking. Traction control stops your wheels slipping when you're accelerating. But will it work driving uphill? These huts shield specially prepared gradients of ice from the sun and are the perfect place to test. This is what happens when the traction control is switched off. traction control, no traction. Come on, come on. All right, all right, I'll dip the clutch, dip the clutch. Proper driving technique for ice, very gently, gently. Gently, gently, gently. Right, I'll take a run at it, that's it. No matter what I tried, the front-wheel drive X-Type wasn't going up. But turn the traction control on and power is automatically restricted so the tyre's grip is never overwhelmed. The hill is conquered with no fuss at all. Nobody knew what would happen in our final test, except that it would need a large runoff area. To test the Electronic Stability Programme, ESP, we headed onto a frozen lake the size of central London. You can probably just spot me in the distance. ABS and traction control stop wheel slip in a straight line, but ESP stops you skidding sideways. Just 1% of drivers know how ESP works, yet I think it should be fitted on every car. The test is to try and swerve round one obstacle, then a second, and then a third. To begin with, we'll keep the ESP turned off. Right, I'm driving down a motorway at 70 miles an hour. I'm going to suddenly be faced with an emergency avoidance situation. I've got no ESP. And I'm sheet ice. Hold tight. One, missed two, and no! I've lost total. Oh, I pulled a muscle in my neck. I missed the first two obstacles, but after that, I was just a passenger, no control. And uh, I just slammed into that, uh, fortunately, polystyrene wall. Normally, Bosch test at 50 miles an hour, but this was at 70. And given that it was on sheet ice, I was doubtful that even the latest generation of ESP could save the skid. But we turned it on, rebuilt the wall, and tried again. OK, now, building up to the same situation, 70 miles an hour, I now have the ESP switched on. I face the same hazard. I still can't believe this is going to work. 70 miles an hour. Miss one, miss the other, and just drive past the wall and gently bring the car to a halt with my ABS brakes. I mean, it's just so undramatic. It's Unbelievable. The ESP senses a potential skid, so first cuts power, then applies individual brakes to counteract the slide. It reacts better than any human could. Watch how the front wheel automatically brakes just enough to keep you straight. 
It's easy to see why Mercedes reckon ESP cuts accents by a third, while Toyota say by a half. Miss one, miss two. If the system works here, it'll work anywhere. And after experiencing it firsthand, I'm certain your next car should be fitted with ESP. Just remember, different car makers may call it different things, like DSC, VSA, or VSC. Without ESP, you risk a crash like this. And the thing you hit may not be so soft.